name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And we gather here this afternoon to say our last farewells and celebrate the funeral mass for our sister Mary. So let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life, Lord of mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who have set a limit to this present life so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy you command the name of your servant Mary to be inscribed in the book of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now we will listen to the word of God proclaimed in the readings by Barry and Connor. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord will destroy death forever. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, see, this is our God in whom we hope for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord, so that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord, both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God. As scripture says, be my life. It is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it. Anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for the eternal life. If a man serves me, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. If anyone serves me, my Father will honor him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mary was born on the 18th of January, 1929. Her childhood home was at Drumnagoon, a townland just outside the town here. Her early life in the country was happy as she grew up under the care of her parents, Barney and Ellen Hamill. Alongside her sister, Sheila, and her brothers, Jerry and Jackie. Mary started work as a weaver, age 14, in Rob's factory in Portadown, alongside her father. Mary married Eamon Jordan in 1952, and they lived initially with Eamon's aunt, Sarah, in William Street, in the town. Their first home was a small house in Junction Road, then called Westland Road, and the family moved to Ballyorn Heights in 1972. Mary had six children, Yvonne, Michael, Kieran, Ethna, Barry, and Connor. And I'm particularly indebted to uh, Barry and Yvonne for helping me uh, with this. And Mary's life revolved around her family. It was a busy home. All the children remember their friends popping in and out alongside regular visits from the grandparents and aunts and uncles. Mary's sister Sheila was our lifelong friend. And they spent every second Sunday in Mahari, where Sheila lived, for many years. And later, when the children were older, Mary and Sheila ventured further afield. They went to Lourdes and Spain, where they spent summer months in cafes, sharing a chip and a coke 
and what I like to call people watching. I'm good at it myself. Ming was also close to Sheila and Noreen, her sisters-in-law. Mary's six children all had families of their own, and Mary became a proud grandparent and great-grandparent over time. And she enjoyed this time of her life immensely. Mary had a great love for her children, but she never let them get too far ahead of themselves. She was also always one for insightful observations. And her children remember her once saying, you've all done very well for yourselves with your wives and husbands, and mind you, none of you are any oil paintings. <laughs> I think that was rather unkind, for even with masks on, um, you're all right, like, you know. Uh, Mary liked her regular trips into Portadown and further afield in pursuit of bingo. She made many, many friends over the years. And her mark on people's lives is reflected in the lovely comments and tributes to her in response to her death notice on Facebook. And there have been many more of them since this was put together. The family are deeply touched by these, especially in the absence of the normal Irish wake and calls to the house owing to this pandemic. As her health failed with the passing years, Mary moved into the fold on the Garvahi Road here and then on to Achnacloy Nursing Home in Lurgan in 2013. Mary's family are very grateful for the care she received during her time in Achnacloy House, and they've asked me to pass on their heartfelt thanks to all who cared for her. As with so many people, the pandemic brought many challenges for Mary and her family. Visiting was disrupted for long periods, and Mary's daily family visits ceased. And with regular family interaction interrupted, Mary's health and social skills deteriorated. And this was a heartbreak for the family as we know, it is a heartbreak for so many families during this pandemic. But life is a journey, a journey from one birth to yet another birth, from the womb life to the womb of life. There is a beautiful parallel between the beginning of life with the infant and the end of life with the elderly, for there is a dependence, a nursing, a great need for others that the intervening years may shroud. Mary herself had a keen awareness from her experiences of life of what really mattered, her faith and her regular attendance in this church were very important to her. So we thank God for Mary's life and for the blessings that her life brought to so many. Mary's life was a life well lived and she leaves behind a loving family devastated by her loss, but also proud of her and all that she achieved. Mary liked a verse of poetry, and he was one I came across from Cecil Day Lewis, which I think is appropriate now. He wrote it when his eldest son was starting boarding school, but it's about parting. I have had worse partings, but none so knows at my mind still. Perhaps it is roughly saying 
that God alone could perfectly show how selfhood begins with a walking away. And love is proved in the letting go. To Mary's family, I offer sincere condolences and those of Canon Toner. To her daughter Yvonne, husband Patrick, grandson Rosa. To her son Michael, wife Eileen, and grandchildren Shane, Brona, and Siobhan. To her son Kieran, wife Margaret, grandchildren Rory, Cara, and Anya, and great grandchildren Olivia, Charlie, and Elliot. To her daughter Ethne, and her husband Colm, and grandson Dara. To her son Barry, wife Terry, grandchildren Paul, Fiona, Danny, Matthew, and Kerry, and great grandchildren Lily and Keon. And to her son Connor, and his wife Patricia, and grandchildren Sarah, Shun, and Con, and great grandson Harry. May she rest in peace. Now we have the prayers of the faithful and uh, Siobhan, Cara, Kerry, Anya, Shun and Sarah will lead us in the prayers. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, both living and dead. In baptism, Granny received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Our sister Mary was nourished at the table of the Saviour. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The family and friends of Mary seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Mary. Strengthen our hopes so that we may live on the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen and love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters, cleanse them of their sins, and grant them the fullness of redemption. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Mary, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
Prophet Joseph, our venerable spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Eamon our Bishop, his assistant Bishop Michael, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Mary, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall become like you for all the ages and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command we now stand and formed by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now, for the distribution of Holy Communion, I will begin at this side. 
So if you come out to the centre aisle and then go back to your seat down the side aisle, starting at the front and working back. And similarly then, I will move over to this side and again you can come out to the centre and go back to your seats by the side aisle, again beginning from the front.
Thank you, Sinead, for that. It's very appropriate that we'd hear that because just at the weekend there, Pope Francis uh, announced that officially NOC is recognised nationally and internationally as a Marian shrine. So now for those who are at home and cannot join us, uh, we offer an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Mary, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so rejoice, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. <laughs> And before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord and let perpetual light shine upon her. In your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Mary in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Mary in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Mercifully, Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister forever. Amen. And just a reminder that for the burial, the restrictions limit us to 15 people. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest.